have a Rosa Ragosa shrub. My brother Joey from Good Morning Gloucester has tracked this particular rose bush for some time now. He has beautiful photographs up on his blog. So I did some research and I found that from this one bush you could make two different types of jelly. From the actual rose petals you could produce a jelly and from the actual rose hips that are grown off the same shrub in late summer, early fall, you can make another jelly. So kind of cool that one plant you can get two jellies from that taste totally different. Here is the rose petal jelly and you can see it's a beautiful rose color. And right here I made the rose hip jelly which is very different in color and very different in taste. So here we have a rose from the Rosa Ragosa shrub and in the center you see this beautiful yellow color. We want to be careful, they come off very easily. But you're just going to gently pull the petals off. Here I have a mason jar. First you want to start with a layer of sugar. This is just regular granulated sugar. Take some petals and toss them in. Now, when you make this, I would let it sit at least overnight. Two or three days is perfect. Every once in a while, you just want to give it a shake. You just want to cover it. So you put a cover on this, let it sit for a day or two. So here we have some rose hips that my kids picked. And what you're looking for when you pick the rose hips is this beautiful orange-red color. They can't be too soft. If they're, they're soft, it means that they're really ripe. So it's kind of tricky. You want them firm, but not mushy. They can be slightly, slightly tender. I'm just going to cut them and you're going to cut this top off and then you're going to cut it in half and inside you can see there are a lot of seeds. To get the seeds out, scraping them with your fingertip under running water really helps the process go along a lot faster. So in a pot you're going to add six cups of water and eight cups of cleaned rose hips. Place it on your cooktop, bring it to a boil, and then turn the heat down, cover it, and simmer it for an hour and a half until the rose hips become tender. This is the product that you'll have after you have done that. So with a slotted spoon, you're going to very gently, very gently, just press onto the rose hips, and we're going to try to get some more of the flavor out. You need to really be careful, very gentle. I have found, and after making this a few times, that my flour sifter really helps the process of extracting the clear liquid. What I do is I ladle out right into my flour sifter the rose hips. It's going to give it a shake. So we need to strain our liquid one more time. There's some little fibers in there that we still want to get out. The more we get out, the clearer our jelly will be. I have a glass measuring cup and I have two jelly bags, one inside of the other. So I'm going to ladle some of the liquid into our jelly bag. Now just lift up. You're just going to let all that clear liquid come out. Now in this bag, you're going to see what I mean by those little fibers that we're trying to get out. And you really don't want to squeeze the bag because then you're going to squeeze the fibers out of the bag. So here is the residue, the fibers that I was telling you about that we want to get out of our liquid. So I'm just going to rinse this out under running water and we're going to do the process again. We have our clear liquid that we boiled from our rose hip. There's three cups in this pot and to the three cups we're going to add a half a cup a fresh squeezed strained lemon juice in one package of Sure Gel Fruit Pectin. So this is going to take about a few minutes to come to a boil and as soon as it does we're going to add our three and a half cups of rose infused sugar. You just kind of want to go along the edges of your pot too. So now it's come to a nice boil and we're going to add our sugar. Now we're going to bring this to a boil again and as soon as it comes to a boil we're going to add a quarter of a teaspoon 
of salted butter and we're going to take it off the burner and we're going to strain out our rose petals and we're going to put it in our mason jars. The flavor of this jelly is very similar to red zinger tea. So if you're a fan of red zinger tea or you're curious before going through this whole process if you'd even enjoy this type of jelly, you can always try some red zinger tea. Here we're going to strain our rose petals. I'm showing you how you can use a slotted spoon. We'll get out any little pieces that I didn't get out with my slotted spoon and I'm going to show you it's all the stuff that we strained out. You're going to fill the jar and leave about a quarter of an inch to three quarters of an inch at the top. And at this point, you're just going to take one of your lids. Now these have to be sterilized. I've already sterilized these glass mason jars. You put it in a water bath. It's very simple. You boil them for 10 minutes in water. Um, and tip them upside down when you take them out of your water bath and let them just dry. So you put the lid on, and then you're just going to fasten the ring around it and seal it up. Now at this point, in order to get these to seal, we need to put them back into a water bath and you're going to boil them for 15 minutes. Be very careful when putting them into your water bath. It's just a big pot of water, fill it up, it should cover the top by an inch of water. Take them out, set them on a dish towel, um, and let them dry. You'll hear the cans actually pop as they're drying, um, and that'll let you know that they have been sealed. These make wonderful gifts, a hostess gift, a holiday gift. It's delicious just on toast, an English muffin, and you actually can glaze a pork roast with it. And it came right from our neighborhood, right on the back shore of Gloucester. Enjoy. Thank you.